Uh, I think, you know, so far I've had two questions this morning. One was, what are you going to talk about? You didn't, I didn't give anybody a, a title. And, and, it, and it, for the truth of it, I, I can't think of a title. As long as I've known what I want to talk about, I can't think of a title. But the other one was, you're not going to keep us here all day. <laughs> so with this here, uh, let, me st- uh, let me start with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the opportunity for, for me to be here. I look at myself as a wayward child, and you came in and picked me up and set me on the higher places. And I am so grateful for that. Uh, even if I talk about myself, this is, this is not about me, but, but what you have done for me and others. I thank you in your name. Thank you, Lord. So here it goes. The start of it. Uh, a long, 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 long time ago, somebody said to start on a trip, you have to take the first step. And when I look across this room and I look at all my friends, each one of us has started that trip a long time ago. Each one of us could come up here and could testify to where this trip has taken you. For many of us, it's taken us to a lot of different places, a lot of, a lot of people. I mean, some are here, some are gone. Some of them we're waiting to see when the Lord comes and takes us, takes us home. Don't mind me if I'm choked up. I'm just excited to be here. Um, I believe in this Bible. This is my whole life. And let me start with a testimony. There was a time when uh, my world was almost coming to an end. Wasn't too happy about being here, and I, I even thought about, you know, who would really care if I showed up? Would I be missed? Would anybody really care if I just never came back? Well, the whole thing ended up that Jesus came into my life. And that night, I gave him my heart, my soul, everything that I had. And uh, strangely enough, he told me, I want you to get a Bible. I want you to get a King James Bible. Many people have asked me, why the King James? And it's perfectly simple. When I came to him, I knew nothing about him. I went through a whole life of dodging, knowing him. Oh yeah, he he was there. I knew that there were churches, they they all confessed God, you know, and they knew Jesus, but I didn't know him. And he wanted me to get an education. And I mean, he could have said, well, I want you to read this book and you read that book, but he gave me this book to read. And as I read it, it, whole thing opened up. Well, if I know I, maybe with maybe a couple people were here the, when I had this sermon, and nothing has really changed. I want to say the same thing, and I don't think God would mind if I repeat it. This book, the ones that are in your hands, is truth. This book in your hands can keep you from sin. Another truth is if you turn your back to it, sin can keep you from this book. Now here's here's where my heart really comes out because what I'm about to say will sound probably hard, but this book is not just something to possess, stick in a corner, forget about it. 
or just keep pictures or whatever in it. This book was meant to be opened and read. Uh, again, as I started to read this here, there were so, also so many different verses, you know, that came to my mind, you know, and the first one is really from uh, Revelation 1.3. It says that we are blessed just for reading this book. Uh, if you go to 1 Corinthians 9, 16 through 18, tells you that there is a reward for those that come up to tell this message from this book. Then, of course, when and you look at, um, I like this one from uh, 1 John 4, 19, is that we love him, but he loved us before we come to him. Of course, I'm paraphrasing this here. And then the, the, uh, looking at John 3, 16, to, all the way to 21, talks about the need to spread the word from this Bible, that each one is needed. And I thought, I thought, you know, how can I make this more personable? You know, the, you know, in, the, in the, all the years that I, I've studied this book, and I, I have two verses, and I mentioned this the last time I was here, or uh, last time I was up here, and oh. Did I put them in here? Uh oh, I'm lying. Why well, you have to chase me out of here? But anyway, I will tell them, and you can look it up. And I, it is my fault for not searching this better. The first one is from the book of Isaiah. Not my words, but the Lord's. And the very fact that when I once I say this, you'll know who. Is doing the talking. Jesus himself says, I know your name. He looks around the room, looks at everybody. I know your name. Your name is graven on my hands. Nobody here around the world in this, un in this universe can take your name from his hand. To me, that is inspiring because I felt wanted. I'm not just a byproduct, something that was put together for to entertain other people. The other one, you know, uh, the other verse came from Zechariah, and it's, I really feel ashamed that I didn't read them up. I thought for sure I had them in this book. The one from Zechariah, to make it even more personable is these are the names of my friends. It's there. And I promise the next time you see me and you ask me those verses, I will have them handy. I feel so ashamed that I don't have them here. They're inside the book. And if you look, you can find them. They're there. And I didn't change the words terribly to just to have something to say. Well, after I got my Bible and I, I started reading, all these truths came out to me. And there's more. My friends, we can all come up here and give a list of different texts that are inspiring, that will lift us up. You know, that's why we're here, and that's why we have our Bible studies and our communications with our friends. The next thing that I was asked to do was to find a church. Simple task. And he didn't tell me, I want you to go here, or I want you to go there. He just says, I want you to find a church. And I went out. And like anybody else, I looked with my eyes instead of, Asking for prayer. I didn't pray to him to find the church that I should belong in. I went out. I found a church. And what was amazing was I felt comfortable in it. The church itself opened up to me. 
and actually wanted me there. I didn't feel like I, I had to hide in with a group of people. I just felt wanted. So naturally, it didn't take very long before I wanted to join. The pastor of the church says, I want to meet you on Wednesday, 7 o'clock. We need to talk. Okay, I went. And he asked me this. Just why do you want to join this church? Strange question, really. Ask yourself, just why are you here? Why? My response to him was, I want to know Jesus. That's what it is. And it hasn't changed in all these years. It's the same thing. I want to know. And then I've truly talked with my friends, and I keep on saying this because you all that, uh, that believe in this Bible are my friends, and I feel very close to each one. Even if I don't know you personally, you're all our friends, and that brings you to, closer to me. Well, joining the church is an easy thing to do, and apparently the pastor was happy with my response. I joined the church. And it wasn't very long that something happened that I started asking questions. A lot of people go and they just sit and they listen to somebody else and they're happy with that. I wasn't. This book said this, and they were saying that. And when I asked why, there was no really, they didn't, they gave me something to satisfy me for the second. But the question still arose, if God said it, why are we doing something else? That's when my journey started, to look for truth. To find, find the truth that uh, was hidden. So many churches are, start off, and you can go to any church. And I have no, I have no qualms about going to different churches. I think it's wonderful because if they tell you the message, if they open up the Bible and give you a message, fine. That's what we're supposed to do: is open up this book and dig into the message. Of course, we're noted for digging into, a, a, if we read a, a, a verse, we dig into it, we separate it, dissect it, run it through the mill. A lot of people, from, especially from other churches, oh, you read a different gospel. No. My same book. I can go out and buy the same thing you have in your hand, and my understanding of the Bible is because I will search it. I will look with my heart to see what is being said. Not because somebody is saying it. It's what Jesus is saying to my heart, to my very self. And how could I possibly be up here telling you something that's not here? I didn't expect it from anybody else. Like I said, I, I hated the, the fact that uh, Hiding in some churches, you know, there was, when I was a young kid, I walked out because I couldn't stand the very thought that they had God locked in a box. And they opened that box up and they let him out for a little bit. And then he was politely stuffed back in. My God can't be stuffed in. He cannot be contained in anything. There's not enough room for anybody to hold him back. With this belief... I couldn't stay in that church. I walked out. Sadly, I, I did a whole bunch of living all by myself. That naturally, I came to the end of my, my road. And I, could, I knew that there had to be something. Jesus come in there and took me in. And I'm, I'm glad. And since then, I haven't been able to shut up. Put me in a class, put me in, in a room with a bunch of people and talking about the Bible. I will open up and 
say my, my piece. But it, what I'm saying is what I learned from this book. Not from, you know, and let's face it, we do have a lot of books, and I'm not putting down any of them. The, you know, the fact that Mrs. White made the statement to a group of people saying that if you would have studied this book more, you wouldn't need my books. Truthfully, when you read her books, they're a carbon copy, making it easier for you to understand this book. I can't denounce her one bit. I love her writings. I've, I've read a lot of them, but they all lead me back here and where we belong. Again, their journey, our journey takes us to many places. How many of us, you know, and then when I look at the young people, you know, yes, they, they're just starting, but eventually, when they get a little older, they'll see that the road that is taken is not an easy one. It is not easy because it has never been promised that just because you take and accept Christ that it would be easy. He said they hated him, they will hate you. And there's no lie to that because uh, certain people, you know, like I said, this book, you either can accept it, or you can reject it. That is the two truths to this book. I'm glad that I chose the people to be with that open this book, to dare to open this book and read it, and read it for what it says, and stand on what they have understood. It's the whole world of meaning to me. Uh short while ago, my wife had a reunion we, we went to. And uh, the next day, her friends asked us, says, would we join them to, to church? And we did. And I, now, uh, uh, it was a Baptist church. And I love Baptist church because they sing. They're, they're not afraid to open up and sing. You know, they, they put the... They put the whole new life to singing. And, and that's one, one of the things I love about this church is that uh, they're not as afraid of, you know, to sing or worship their God through song. Well, the pastor come out with, um, oh boy, the book of Acts 17. And I'd like you to take you there uh, to Acts 17. And that one, I, I got myself set because I knew that's where I wanted to go with this. And, but I'm, I'm just going to go from verse 16 to 21. But you're cordially invited to go further. And I want you to especially look at a, a certain, certain verse. I want to find it first before I... And it, it said that... Uh, oh, here. Here it is. It's in verse 30. It says, The times of this ignorance God winked at. We know that when the Lord comes back, he's going to do something other than wink. We're not expecting him to be smiling because when he comes back, he will be angry. At this old world, and I think truthfully, those that have got up and shoved him aside to tell the congregation things that they thought they didn't need, needed to hear. Instead of staying with the word of God, they put in their own version of what they think. To me, that is strange fire. It is not what God wanted from us. He wanted us to give the truth. And in that there, 
again, going f past the chapter that I'm reading, I think that would make a great sermon for somebody if somebody wants to think about it. But let me start with, with what uh, I have on my mind. And if you see my hand flying around here, no, I'm not chasing flies or mosquitoes. Uh, not definitely not drying any uh, nail polish. Um, and I, <laughs> well, this could be debatable. I'm not up here with having fits. But join me, please, because if I slaughter some words, you have your Bible before you read with me, please. And starting at 16, it says, Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred within him, and he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogues of the Jews, and with the devout person in the market daily with them that met with him. Certain philosophers, the Epicureans and the Stoics, entered or encountered him. And some said, some said that what will this babbler say? Babbler, I want you to think about babbler. He says, he seems to be the setter forth of strange gods because he preached unto them Jesus the resurrection I will stop right there I know I was going to go further but I want to stop right there looking at this Paul if you if anybody I don't know how many people have actually looked at a map in the Bible have you ever paid a particular attention to the map of of um, Paul his journey. Have you ever really looked at it? Have you ever counted the steps that that man took? This man put a new definition of picking them up and setting them down. He went to different places to preach the gospel. And I thought, this is wonderful because it tells you right here that as he waited, the Spirit stirred him to go out and he saw that the city was uh, given to idolatry. It was, it's been written in several books that Athens in his time was one beautiful place to go. People from all over the known world went there because the, building, the buildings were beautiful. They, uh, the, the intellection, you know, the people like to be around people that know things. But they also, the idolatry part is that the city had more statues than people that were living there. Paul was greatly upset with that because you can't converse to a piece of stone. Stone just will not answer you. I know my wife has looked at me sometimes as a stone that just won't answer her back. And she gets upset at that. And I, I have to agree with her. Okay. It says that he disputed in the synagogues of the Jews. Think about that. He went all the way to Athens to go to the synagogues of the Jews. Why? Because his commission was to Start the house of God. Just like us, we start here. We train those here before we can send them out. When we send them out, they know something. They just don't have a base knowledge of a few words. But they you know because there are going to be questions that need to be asked. Okay. The thing is, it, um, it says that he met with the devout persons in the market daily. I like to think that includes us. When you think about it, we praise our God for sending people like, like Paul himself. 
Other people, you know, that have gone on missionaries to different places, bringing the word to people that don't know. Jesus was my instructor to this Bible. I believe it with all my heart. That before I could go out and say anything to anybody, he wanted me to know what was on his mind and to speak it. And when I did, the biggest thing I got out of it was this is our tradition. Our Bibles tell us, in vain do you worship me for the traditions of men. The Bible is explicitly, explicitly clear on that. Begin to water up. <laughs> Again, you know, when we look at this here, the, the philosophers, you know, these people of great thinking, I, I, I look at it, you know, because the uh, Epicureans, they're very much like the people today. They, they had to have whatever was there. If it was new, they had to have it. And there's, actually, there's nothing wrong with it, because my friend, there's a lot of friends here that have their everything written on a little telephone. And then this talks to them. It can show them what they want to know in a split second. And I think this is wonderful. It, it is. But that's for some people. I have a laptop. I, I enjoy that. But I don't have to plug this in. With those two verses that I gave, and again, I will, I will make sure everybody has the has uh, the the name and the number of the, the verse, that if you were to go to a hardware store and buy the very best light switch and install it in the book, one, you don't need to install anything there, but those two there would be your light switch. The minute you open up your book, the minute you see this, this book is on, it's open for you, it's there waiting for to answer your questions. The Holy Spirit has, says so in, in Revelation that you are blessed just for reading this. Why other people? I, I remember when I was in Missouri, I went on a break and I, as I walked out of the paint booth, there was a woman reading Revelation. I said, boy, I like that book. She says, that scares me. And she was serious about it. She was really scared reading Revelation. I said, you have nothing to worry about if you're in Christ. That is for the people that won't listen, that will not pick up the Bible and read and find out what God really wants. Again, you know that when we look, like I said, that when Christ returns, he's not going to be winking at anybody. And I think, you know, even we will be, some, to some extent, the torments will be there for us only to see what we're really made out of. You know, the, the people that talk the talk but won't walk the walk, they go through life and they'll, they'll, they'll say that they agree with this and, and then when things get hard, how quickly they change. Our sad thing when we look at some of the people that we had in the church that have disappeared simply because this asked too much of them. They couldn't take, couldn't take the pressure, so they, they decided to leave. Not sneeze at this book when you, when you really look at it. There's no, it tells you exactly what it wants you to do. But you have the choice. You have the choice. You can either accept this book or not. And with this here, the decision is ours. Jesus says, if you'll lift me up, if you lift me up, I'll draw all men to me. It doesn't say that I can slide him aside. Lord, let me, let me, let me take the, the cue here. He doesn't want that. I think, really, if we look at the book of Job, Book of Job, um, that he tried to do that, fight his own battles. It wasn't a battle for him to fight. Even though he was the prime target of it, all he had to do was 
Leave it to God. Our God loves us so much that he knows who we are. Nobody is going to hurt us. Satan, is, what can he do? He is limited on what he can and cannot do. So, do I have to worry about him? If he put out the order, okay, this guy is going to die. I don't have to worry about that. Because I have a Christ that knows me. My name's there. And I know that there will be the day that even if I do go under the ground, it won't be for very long. One of the three things that I discovered in all the years studying this book, three things I am and most of us are to inquire. Open up this book. We read it. We are to inquire. We then go out to inspire. And the third one is before we expire. <laughs> When you think about that, and believe me, I have no, no, uh, I'm in no rush to leave this world. I've, I've, I'm at home here, and I, I'm, I'm at peace with my God. So that death part, until the day that I no longer am breathing, I have a job to do. I'm to inquire, and I'll never stop inquiring because, like Mrs. White said, if we would only study this more, then we could. Um, we don't need other books. The other books are great. They're, they're handy for some people. But everything that we need to know is here if we'll, we'll search for them. So, some, to the person that says, am I, am I going to be here all day? No. This, <laughs> this, this brings me to the end. And, I, and I'm hoping that if you've heard something that only you can do what you have to do, look at it, you ask yourself, do I believe it? Or don't. I can't force you. I can't twist your arm. I'd like to. I would really like to. But I can't. That is the decision for the person to make. If I really didn't have to give this message to my friends because they all know it. I mean, this is nothing new. There's nothing new that I could possibly say up here that we haven't heard before. I like to think that I'm speaking to the one that has turned his back to this or slid away from it. And with this here, Rob, I asked Rob for a certain song. And um, we'd like to invite you to turn in your hymnals to hymn number 511, 511. I know whom I have believed. Let's stand and sing um, this song together.
service here has ended, but our commitment to our Lord has just begun. The road we take is to bring his word to others, to share forever and ever. We thank you, and, we, and I, I'll ask in the, with the church that you would go in peace, and uh, may we, um, I look for that day that we meet again.